Yo, this is your girl Nina from A Breakable Strong Woman coming to you on this Monday. How many of y'all checked out the eclipse? Did y'all look up there? No, be complaining to me about your eyes tomorrow. No, because my son was trying to be hard. David was trying to be hard hitting Miss Lorraine. I had to make him go get the glasses, and then he still didn't put them on. He was looking at it with his camera. How many of y'all checked it out? It was something to see. Let you know, God is real. A man can't do that. So, um, I'm glad I was here once again in history to see something like that. You know what I'm saying? Come on in, y'all. Come on in and talk to you, girl. Come and talk to me. You know, my son. How y'all doing tonight? I have two, maybe three things I want to talk about real quick. Come on in. Let's talk. I want to clear up something. Y'all like this little microphone? It's so cute. Um, I want to clear up some things real quick. Because um, I have to... You know how... How can I put this? You know how when you're in school and you got the kids that they, they get it. You know, they, they get it. Then you got the kids over here. The teacher got to go sit down with them and they have to be one-on-one -on -one because what she just said in front of the class, the other kids were somewhere looking like, huh? Y'all remember them kids? This this what YouTube is like. I had the, the grown-ups that get it. Then I had the, kid, the grown-ups that they only hear certain words. They catch certain things. That's called selective hearing. They only catch the things they want to catch. Everything else just fly over their head. When everybody else on their way to graduate, I got the students on YouTube just sitting back like, I don't like you because you like Diddy. Never one time, y'all. Never one time did I say Diddy was innocent. I want y'all to show me one video where I said this. Do I got to defend myself? No, because if I did, that's my own personal opinion. That's what y'all don't understand about life. Everybody have their own opinion. We have free will to feel how we want. We don't have to go along to, be, to get along in the crowd, okay? Could y'all get my likes up while y'all in the house, please, if y'all don't mind? I want to say this, and I ain't going to talk about Diddy Lowe, because I got to talk about Ernesto, the horse booty man. Mm-hmm. When I said that God forgives, and if Diddy asks for forgiveness, he's forgiven, that don't have nothing to do with me. Okay, can we make that clear? That has nothing to do with me. I did not write the Bible. I am not God. I was repeating my upbringing and my teaching of the word. So I don't know why when someone repeat God's word, y'all put that on them. Like, because you don't like what the Bible say. Take that up with God. It's my job to tell you what the word says. If you follow it, that's on you. But like I said, if this man asks for forgiveness, he will be forgiven. I can't say when, how, why. I don't do the process. I just know what the word says. I don't even know if God go forgive him right away. But I never said he's exempt. See, this is for the selective hearing people. I never one time said when you ask for forgiveness, you are exempt from punishment. Never heard that come out my mouth. You know how if you steal your mom's car and you say, Mommy, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. She went, okay, I forgive you. But your behind ain't coming out that room for 30 days. See, you see what I'm saying? That's how God works. He will forgive you. But you got to pay for your sin. So please believe me when I say he's going to be forgiven. That don't mean he got, he's not going to pay. The man that killed his family in Detroit I told you all about. He just got double life in prison. But he has God to forgive him. But he still got double life in prison. Y'all took it as if I was saying, if Diddy say I'm sorry, and he didn't been with kids, cows, and monkeys, he just gonna walk on out the courtroom. I never said that. And let's be clear one more, more, one more again for the people in the back that really don't know what's going on with the Diddy case. People that's holding 
personal vengeance against a person they don't know, which is nonsense to me. This man never met none of us, so it's kind of cray cray to me. Did he not in handcuffs? Because someone asked me this. Several people asked me this. Why they haven't arrested him yet? You don't get arrested from a lawsuit. Can we make this clear? This man has no charges to get arrested. What are y'all? Y'all sitting there every day waiting for them, him to get arrested on what charges? What charges? Because if, if it's some charges I didn't hear about, and I follow this case very closely, because I'll be the first to let you know when did he get arrested. I'll be the first one on here. Diddy, they got him. I'm not a Diddy protector. I don't know Diddy. Diddy got billions of dollars and I got bills. Do you think I care what Diddy doing? The man has to have charges to get arrested, people. Let me tell you why he don't have charges right now. I ain't say tomorrow he might not have charges because I know what y'all to get on here and say. As soon as he get arrested, ah, Nina, you're looking stupid. I never said none. Y'all, so how do y'all have relationships? That's what I understand. How do you have a relationship or a job when you don't understand a conversation or the meaning of stuff? How do you communicate? Have a selective hearing. I don't, I see why a lot of people, I'm going to be real. I see why a lot of people are single because they don't have communication skills. They don't know how to compromise. They don't know how to talk. They don't know how to respect. I see it. Y'all do it to me and I don't sleep with none of y'all. Y'all do it to me. So I can imagine what you're doing to the person you're sleeping with. Dang, come, come on, people. What I was trying to say is, I'm going to tell you why he has not been charged yet. Yet. If at all. Blackburn, Ty Tyrone. You better call Tyrone. Yeah, yeah, that Tyrone. Erica Badu told her man to call Tyrone, and he called him. He called Tyrone ass, and Tyrone let everybody down. I told y'all Tyrone is like a greyhound chasing behind them and the police. He is chasing anything he can to come up. He got his little degree from law school. He sued Chase Bank. He won, and then he thought he was Johnny Cochran. I told y'all that. You know why he thought he was Johnny Cochran? Because people would call him to sue superstars. If you ain't got money, you call the, the first person in the yellow pages, the one that ain't nobody else calling. You call him. Yeah, he's still in the yellow pages. He I only think Tyrone on Google. He in the yellow page. You got to go find an old phone book to find Tyrone ass. He tried to sue T.I. and Tiny, didn't, didn't work. He tried to sue Nicki Minaj, didn't work. Now it's Diddy. The judge told him yesterday, you're clout chasing. When a judge tell you, you clout chasing, a judge, you clout chasing, get out of my courtroom. You really ain't got no case no more. Three of his cases for um little rodney they didn't throw him out he he hold on to the last two limbs and the judge already don't like him he told the court officers to suck his penis you think he'll get somewhere with that attitude suck this he don't show up for meetings he don't submit paperwork like the judge asked them to because they don't have it you know what the judge wanted the judge said, oh, you got all these witnesses. You got 47 people that said that Diddy did all these things. Where are these people? They need to be in my courtroom by tomorrow. Nobody showed up. Little Rodney wrote 47 pages of alleged things that Diddy has done with not one of them people he wrote about in the courtroom. I can't go downtown and say, I want to sue because my cousin fell down in Walmart in California. They'd be like, what, 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 what the hell is your cousin? I can't sue for somebody else. The judge know little Rodney is mad about his $50,000 in his contract. It's been known because the judge called him out on it. 
He said, you mad about money, so you just coming in my courtroom with some buffoonery. I don't have time. So this is why all the stuff we thought was going to happen to Diddy has not happened. Because little Rodney Case is gone in the wind. He the one had all the information, remember? This before they even said Cassie was going to um, talk to the feds. Everybody, oh, little Rodney got 40 cents. Oh, it's over. It's over. His attorney is crazy. You don't go get a yellow page attorney to fight a billionaire. You just don't. That's like going to get a sixth grader to fight Mike Tyson. You don't do that. Okay? So this is why for the people, and I'm bringing it up because people keep asking me, you guys, if y'all wonder, why are you talking about Diddy again? I have to. When my, when my people inbox me and they want me to address something, that's my job. So I have to do that. I have to explain and break it down. One woman, God, I wish I would remember her name because I wanted to call her out so bad. She pretty much said, F God. I don't care what you think about God, Nina. You're ignorant. If you think God gonna forget this, forgive that person and this person. I said, what? You can block me. I ain't blocked her yet because I, you know, I had to bless her with my words a little bit. I'm gonna let that resonate into her spirit. Then I'll block her. Cause I'm like, you ignorant. I looked at her picture, right? This woman got to at least be 65 years old. If she not, she had a bad life. She know who she is. At least 65. And she talking that dang on ignorant. And to me, that's sad because you want our elders in our community and you still got a bitter black heart, probably because your man left you a few years ago and your kids don't deal with you. So you mad at everybody, including God and Diddy. Don't know Diddy. So you want to take out on Diddy what your man not doing. I don't want you. So you want them, I hate black men killers. Okay. This ain't the same black man. Now this black man has done a lot of stuff. I'm sure he has. But he ain't the black man that did it to you. I'm sure if Diddy thought you was the last person on earth and, and, and he needed somebody to fill in for uh, young Miami, you wouldn't be his choice, okay? So you ain't got to worry about that. But if, when you talk about God on, in an ignorant way, I don't have time for you. To me, you are atheist when you say that. When you disregard the word, because the word is the word if we like it or not. I fall short. I always say ignorant stuff. I got to catch myself, but y'all know I'm a little... You know, I like to be a little funny sometimes. I don't be really meaning no harm. You know, I get up and I be like, Lord, forgive me. I shouldn't have said that about the monkeys. But I, I do. Because I'm a human being. So I have to give the story because I do celebrity news like everybody else. I may not be as perfect as all these YouTubers, but y'all got to remember, I'm the new kid on the block. I'm in the back house behind the big house. I'm still behind the garage trying to get in the house. Tasha Kadem, Tisha Taylor, they all in the house. You know, they, they getting 400,000 views on one video. I'm the new kid on the block. So I, I'm not going to be like, like they are. If you look at their beginning videos, they just like mine. So please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. If God gets through with me, you know what I'm saying? He's not through with me yet. But I say that to say, until there's charges, Diddy won't go to jail. And Diddy, I didn't see this, but Sherelle said this and I didn't see it. Diddy was celebrating saying something about victory and he was pretty much doing the crip walk. You know why? Because somebody called Diddy and said, brother, <laughs> They ain't got nothing. Somebody didn't get him a phone call. Because I keep hearing about Cassie. Cassie, Cassie, Cassie. But have anybody seen Cassie? So they could be lying. Right now, it don't look for real to me. Because I'm like, where is she? I'm tired of hearing about what she's saying to the feds. And I doubt very seriously. If she was talking to the feds, I doubt very seriously that any of us would know what she's saying. So when I see all these people get on here saying Cassie said this and Cassie said that, I'm like, well, well, is it a fed somewhere leaking to the bloggers with Cassie saying? How we know what Cassie talking about? We not going to know until they put that warrant out and they come get Diddy. I promise you. I just can't believe that Cassie saying all this stuff and, and nobody heard Cassie say it. 
Like uh, somebody lied to me and said she gonna do the interview with Gail and Oprah. I heard that was a big lie. It's like, damn people, why are we lying? We grown out here. This is ridiculous. Ain't no need to lie. Either the man ain't gonna go to jail if he or he's not. You know what I'm saying? Either he's gonna go. You got people in your neighborhood been selling drugs for years. They never went to jail, and life went on. Life just went on. So if he go or he don't, I'm not gonna lose no sleep. None. Trust me, I'm not. And all the people that's supposedly, allegedly involved, they're not talking. Now the rumor is Diddy paying them off. Okay, that's Diddy, that's Diddy M.O. But just think about it, y'all. I'm going to ask y'all a serious question. Could y'all be real with me for a minute? Could y'all please be real with me? And it's going to be hard to say this because nobody want to put their they, they feet in Diddy shoes. Not the freaky booty man shoes. But just say, if you were Diddy. And you like doing all this freaky dicky stuff. And you got all these friends that you do this freaky stuff with. I mean, your friends got more money than you and you a billionaire. And they got power, not just money. Then you got serious killers as friends, the mob. And the stuff start coming down on you. And it look like your whole empire is going to be destroyed. And you the only heir that your children have left that they can depend on. Tell me... Would you not take some of them billions and pay off some people? Would you not pay off some people? Hey, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have did that. Just shut up. Here you go. Here go a million. Because they act like Diddy is doing something that an average person wouldn't do. I can't believe he paying off people. How you can't believe that? He got a billion dollars and he in trouble. He, if you could pay your way out of trouble, would you not do it? That don't make it right. I'm asking y'all a question. Would you do it? You got a billion dollars and you facing probably 20, 30 years in prison. And all you got to do is get people a couple of 50,000, 100,000 here. Would you do it? Or would you say, no, nah, I deserve to go to prison. Lock me up. I'm the freaky booty man. Lock me up. No, you're going to pay. Now tell me this. If you're the person who he did it to. And he offered you a million dollars. Would you take it? Because people dogging out the ones that took it. Would you say, okay, it's been 20 years. I'm over it. Let me get my 20 and go on by my business. Would you take it? If you say no, you're lying. You're lying. Just like Cassie. Cassie went through hell and correction. She went through some hell. And she took $30 million to be. And she suffered more than anybody. And she took $30 million. $30 million? $30 million. Somebody called me right now and said, Nina, remember I slapped you? Well, they never did this. Remember I slapped you and you, you want to press charges? I got $30 million. I'm like, what slap? What you talking about? Well, I don't remember no slap. Diddy. Diddy kicked me down the stairs and then say, I, I got five million. Nina, your arm broke, your leg broke. You said Diddy kick you. No, I tripped. Diddy didn't do that. What you talking about? That's what's going on right now. Everybody got amnesia. They got amnesia because Diddy got money. And you know what? It's not just Diddy paying. Didn't I just say Diddy got big friends in high places? Y'all don't think they was on them free tapes. They was on them tapes. So they all sat around and they smoking their cigars and they drinking. They were like, Diddy, what we finna do? We gotta pay off some of these people to shut the hell up. Since some of the mob guys knock on their door with this money, they, they can't say no. When somebody knock at your door and you, they look like they just buried somebody in the field with a shovel. Hey, my name is Tony and I just come for Diddy and I got this $50,000 for you. You just have a good day. Don't talk to the feds. You go talk to them. You right, Uncle Tony. I'm not talking. I ain't going to jail. I ain't going to my grave. You ain't for the kill. No, it ain't that damn serious. 
I'm for sure that's what's going on, but I can't say it, you know. That's what I just assumed because Diddy, Diddy a serious dude. I never said this man was innocent. Not once. But y'all so like to hearing people say I'm taking up for him. No, I just repeated what God said. God told me to let y'all know if Diddy repent, he's forgiven. And guess what? Every time I go to God with my stupid sins and stuff I do, he forgive me too. I ain't on Diddy level with sinning, but a sin is a sin. And guess what? I still got to pay. I still go through things on a daily basis. I still struggle because I do stuff all the time. I was born into this mess. I'm born. It's a daily struggle. You got to renew your mind every single day and fight these demons. Or you will be stuck into this, this nonsense called life, man. And if I keep reading these comments, I'll be stuck in this whim with the devil. You know, a lot of people just the devil. I'm talking about God. The devil always going to show up. God always got something to say instead of saying, Nina, yeah, you right. However, I'd be glad when he pay. But you right about what God said. God did say that. But I'd be glad when God make him pay. That's different. But don't tell me what God ain't going to do. God ain't going to forgive him. God don't need you as his secretary. He ain't asked you to be his spokesperson. He ain't tell you to come tell somebody they ain't going to be forgiven. God looking at you like you just don't know. You got more curses coming on you than he do. He do got a billion dollars more than you. You punching a clock. Don't be surprised you go to work tomorrow and ain't got no job. Then what you going to do? You ain't got the money to knock on nobody, though. You going to be at the welfare office. So you better be quiet. You know, that's how God works. You, are you talking? Oh, I ain't forgiving him, but you want me to forgive your big mouth, but talking about, okay, let me show you what I can do. So yes, if, 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 did he repent, God will forgive him, but he still got to pay. Do, are we clear now? I never said, and I ne and then when I said I'm praying for him, y'all act like I'm praying. Oh, Father God, please let Diddy walk. Father God, please don't let him go to jail. I don't pray no prayer like that. I said, Father God, please deliver the wicked and the lost. These people are not just Diddy, Hollywood. My brothers and sisters are lost, dear Lord. Please touch Hollywood. Do something, Father. Look what's going on. This is sad. Our entertainers killing each other. They sleeping with each other. They molesting dogs and cows. Lord, what's going on? Please, Father, fix it. I don't care if you got to shut it down for a minute. Do, do something. Step in and show them that you got. That's the kind of prayer I pray. I don't pray that the, the, the um, wicked go free. Lord, let them go free. No, no. Come on, man. Do you go to church? Don't they tell you to, to pray for the sinners in the street? When y'all in church, don't y'all pray for the drug addicts and the prostitutes? It's no different than the, the freak off at Diddy House. Pray for them people. They lost. And half of them on drugs. Diddy is on drugs. The man is messed up in the mind. And then he's a victim too, if y'all don't want to believe it or not. He's been victimized. A lot. He's been victimized a lot because Hollywood took advantage of that young man who was chasing a dream, just like Cassie, chasing a dream. So she sold her soul to the devil. Diddy was chasing a dream, so he sold his soul to the devil for money and fame. Bottom line, y'all can believe it or not. Y'all act like Cassie just met Diddy. He choked her up. He threw her in the house. He tied her up and said, you fit to sleep with 18 men. That ain't how it worked. She liked Diddy. She was in love with this man. From the beginning, she was in love, just like Tina was in love with Ike. You see the beginning of uh, what love got to do with it? He didn't just meet her and bust her in her eye. He charmed her, took her out to eat, made her laugh, made good, good love to her, had her gone. And then about a year later, that's when the fist hit her eye. Because he was up here by then. So that's how it starts. He charming you. But you know what people can't lie to me about? It's always signs, signs before a storm. It's always signs. If you even watch the birds outside and the ducks, when you see them going south, you know it's about to get cold or you know a storm about to come. It's always signs before destruction. You know before a storm, it start lightning first. Thank you so much for the love.
Who just sent me that? Thank Aries. It's always something that's going to show you it's danger. Even on the streets when you're driving, it say dead end. If you keep driving, what you going to do? You're going to run into a dead end. That's why they have signs on the streets, railroad tracks, to let you know what's ahead of you. So for all the women that try to tell me, and I'm not talking about nobody that was a victim that was taken, held against their will, beat up, somebody stuck a needle in their arm. I'm not talking about none of those people. I'm talking about the ones that chose to be with this man. And he showed you that he was Ike Turner Jr. He showed you he was crazy. And if he ain't show you, you heard about it. But a lot of women feel like, I'm different. My butt bigger than hers. I got a PhD and she got a GED. I'm smarter than her. I'm, my hair is real. Hers is weave. So he ain't going to do that to me. And then the first time he... Foul. This is what a lot of women do. I mentor women like this, y'all. Y'all can't piss in my ear and tell me it's rain. Pow. You cry. You run to the police. You tell your mama, your cousins. You throwing up grits and cornflakes. You, you want to hit the national news. This brother didn't hit me. I'm going to go kill him. Two days pass. What you doing? You checking your phone. Is my phone bill paid? He ain't calling me. You waiting on him to call. Next thing you know, baby, I'm sorry. You know, sometimes the stuff I done been through, you know, prison and my daddy wasn't there and the things I go through, sometimes, you know, I lose my head. You the only thing I have. What did I used to say to Tina? So you gonna leave me too? You gonna leave me too, Annie Mae? No, 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 I got you. Your eyes still sticking out your head. I got you, baby. You go back home. Get pregnant again, and maybe six months later, flowers, candy, pow, that was this eye. Oh, God, I'm done for real this time. Three, four days go past. Baby, you know I didn't want to hit you. This how people end up in these relationships. Y'all think I'm being funny. I'm being dead ass. And the ones that's been on, that's on here, because I know a lot of people that's been in um, abuse relationship, abusive relationship, they told me. You can't tell me. You can't not tell me you didn't have no signs. Because somebody be wrong with you. If you meet a brother on the first date and he just busts your nose and you stay with him 14 years, now you're really crazy. If somebody tell me that, uh-uh, he did that from the door. He busts your nose on your first date and you end up being with this brother 14 years. You retarded as hell. Get out my face. Ain't no way. Just sit there and listen to them lies. Looking like a raccoon. You got permanent stuff under your eyes. And you telling people, I've been married 15 years. Bragging. Scared walking on eggshells when you go home. Thinking he going to do something crazy. Can't say nothing to the crazy man. The kids can't talk too loud. You can't check him for cheating. or Y'all remember the movie J-Lo was in? Enough. You remember that movie? She said something to that man about cheating and he beat the dog heck out of her. And, and then it comes to that point. You so deep in that relationship, you can't leave because now you are scared, but you stayed too long. And if somebody watching me right now, you stayed one eye busted too long. I'm telling you, the first time that man put his hands on you. He should have came back with nubs like this. Where your fingers at, Nina? Cut them off. I bet you won't slap nobody else. See, you, you got to meet people energy, sis. And the same thing with guys. Because my son going through it with a female. Women, you do the, you do more. Y'all more mental abusers than, and physical abusers than men. Did y'all know that? I know more women that whoop on men than I know men that whoop on women. And I'm not lying. How many of y'all got a sister, cousin, auntie, friend that will whoop a Negro behind? And you be like, girl, why you be over there beating on that man like that? I don't be saying I will whoop nobody. I'm saying I ain't feel like nobody whoop me. But I ain't going to put my hands on nobody. They ain't putting their hands on me. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my, 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 be, my behind out your presence 
any means necessary. So if it means I'm throwing pots, skillets, tables, whatever, somebody going to know I need some help. I'm in distress up in there because I got to get away from you. And if it's that serious where you want to kill me, oh, I'm leaving the whole state. I would go to a domestic violence center in Houston someday going where you wouldn't even know where I'm at. I don't know how people stick around. Am I victim shaming? No. You, most victims, if you sit and talk to them, if you sit and talk to victims, they stay too long. They took one too many I'm sorry's. Feeling bad for the victimizer. He get up in your head and make you feel bad. Am I lying? How many of y'all been victimized? Y'all sit there and let him. My life just, just been so bad. And you can't see. I would have been like, your life ain't bad yet. When you ain't got no legs, your life going to be bad. Because that's what about to happen. When you kick me, yeah. Mm, then, they, then you can talk. Then you can go on one of them podcasts and uh, bloggers on YouTube and tell your story how I cut off both your damn legs. Because no, I'm not doing it. See, deal breakers. Let's talk about deal breakers. Cassie should have talked about deal breakers with Diddy. I like you, Cassie. Listen here, listen here. This is what she should have said. I like you, Cassie. Listen here, Diddy. Sean, now you Sean. Sit down. Let's get something straight, Sean. I like you too. I really like your money. But I like you too, Sean. But I heard about all the shit you be running around here doing in Hollywood. These F-offs and people disappearing. I got one sign of cray cray. And guess what? We gonna have a problem. Cause Sean, this ain't that, brother. This ain't that. I'm letting you know. I don't care about your goon squad. Y'all gonna have to kill me. Put your hands on me. Ask me to do one half off. We gonna have a problem, Sean. Don't go there with me, brother. See, she should have told him from the door. This is my deal breaker. I don't do F offs. I don't do threesomes. I don't help kill nobody. I don't do rob. I don't do none of that. If you on that, I'm not for you. And guess what? I'm a snitch. So if I see you do anything, you're going to jail, Sean. I'm a straight snitch. Get a shirt, call me Karen, I'm telling. I tell brothers from the dirt, don't do no dirt around me because I don't take bits for men. I don't go to jail. I don't lie to the police. Mm-mm, not Nina. So you know already you can't do nothing around Nina. She telling, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I promise you I'm telling. But see, women... Y'all want to be the different. I, I'm better than Kim Porter. I'm light-skinned. I got good hair. She dark. He really didn't like her. So you land up thinking Sean going to want you better than he wanted Kim. He showed you he was with Kim Porter how long? Didn't even marry her? Allegedly bust her eye and broke her nose. You heard all these things and you still thought Sean was, was good looking? It wasn't his, it wasn't his looks, y'all. It wasn't them little curly hair little things in his head. It was his bank account. I told you, a billion dollars look kind of different than somebody working at GM. You might put up with a little bad feet, you know, his feet ugly, but his feet kind of cute because his feet kind of cute because they doing a cute crip walk, but they kind of cute because he got a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. He got a tooth missing. It's okay. We can work that out because he got a billion dollars. We can go get him some teeth. He got a little pee, -pee. Good. He ain't got to touch me much. Good. Billion dollars, you might do anything. I don't, I wouldn't compromise myself for that. But a lot of women will. I know people to compromise their dignity and their pride for Ray Ray. And Ray Ray driving her car, dropping her off at work. All he doing is laying the pipe. They compromise. They give Ray Ray their food stamps. This nigga don't even work. So I know what y'all will do for Diddy. Are you liars? Everybody out here lying. Y'all chasing Ray Ray and Pookie. Y'all arguing over baby daddies having meetups. You don't believe me? Just cut on World Star. Cut on Instagram. You see black women out there acting a fool, fighting over a brother that don't even have a dang on job. A brother that have 10 kids all over the city. Don't care nothing about you or them kids. And y'all out there fighting. And he at home with a different girl. Probably watching you on World Star. Like, look at him. They fighting over me. He in there with your friend. So y'all gonna tell me y'all wanna talk to Diddy? Yeah. Yeah. 
So a lot of this stuff happens, y'all, because women just don't have self-respect a lot of times. And I'm a woman. I'm going to tell you. Y'all compromise your self-respect for some penis. And that's just the real as I can be. I ain't going to lie. I'm a woman. We know damn well we shouldn't be with certain people and we end up with them. We know damn well you shouldn't be making no baby with a brother that never had a father in his life. This nigga bro don't got no 401k, no insurance. He don't have no savings, credit bad, don't punch a clock, and you sitting there having a baby by him. Is, is that mental illness? And then you get on the internet and say black men ain't no good. First of all, get a black man to say that. That's a black boy. He just a male because he got a penis. That don't make him a man. Get with a real man. Know what a real man is first before you start judging a man. A lot of y'all never even had a man. Y'all just had a male with a penis. So that's why a lot of this stuff happening. And when you tell people that, a lot of folks don't like the truth. They hate the truth. You could have saved yourself a whole lot of black eyes and busted noses and stab wounds if the very first time you would have said, no, you're going to jail. I'm done. The very first time. One of my friends, I don't know whoever, I don't know if y'all y'all heard this story. Could y'all please get my likes up? One of my friends, y'all, I grew up with in my neighborhood. Daughter was murdered. It's going on two years this year, I believe. No, it's been a year. I think this year would be a year. And the first thing her parents said on the news was, we told her over and over and over to leave this crazy dude alone. She didn't put us out of house. She didn't talk about us. She didn't cut us off from the grandkids because she wanted to be with this dude. And we told her to leave this disrespectful, no good so-and-so alone, and she didn't listen, and now she's gone. If you listen to most of these parents' stories about domestic violence of their children, they said, I told him, I told her, and they didn't listen. Because your parents can see stuff. I hope you know that that person ain't no good for you. Mama, stay out of my business. Okay. That's how I am now. Okay. My son, like I said, he, he'd be 25 on the 11th of this month. My baby boy. He been dealing with a, a mental abuser and physical abuser. Female, so they were 16. They met at 16. They had, they, well, they met at 15. They had a baby at 16. So I had to play mama and grandmama to the baby because she is from dysfunction. Her mama had a massive stroke from being an alcoholic. Her daddy was shot nine times. Both her parents in a wheelchair. Her grandmother on dialysis doing the best she can. So she can't do much. So I had to step up and be her mama and the baby's mama. I took that girl from Grand Rapids all the way down to Birmingham. She'd never been out of the city. I told her I was going to talk about this today. I took her from Grand Rapids to Birmingham when I got married with me. And the baby, we went on to the ocean. This girl never seen the ocean. Took her to the ocean in Florida, took her to Atlanta. Wherever we went, she went. Showed her something she never seen before. She lived with me in Birmingham for three years, rent free. I put shoes on this girl's feet when she had holes in her shoes. And I say all this to say, they're now 24 and 25 years old. They have another baby. The baby they have a nine-year-old and a four-year-old. My son, my good-looking young man, is so mentally messed up that he has to call me to validate that he's a good person. Mama, ain't I'm a good person? She keeps saying this, mama, and he'll grow up. He's tough in the streets. He boxing all that. Look on my channel. I got him boxing. She kept him from boxing. When he was about to go to college, she convinced him to come back up to Grand Rapids because she got put out of my house for being disrespectful. So he didn't go to college. He let his boxing career go down in Birmingham. My, my ex-husband was paying for him to be in the Golden Gloves. He was just about to meet Tyson and um, Deion, I always say his name wrong, Waters, Deontay Waters. The same trainer that, that trained him was training my son. His name is Dave. He had a, a 
opportunity out this world to go play football. He let all that go for her. Well, the other day I went over there. She called me every name but the child of God. This girl that had her family come to my house, trying to kick my doors in. She didn't stab my son. She didn't cut my son. She didn't cut his beautiful hair off. He got thick, curly hair. She didn't do all kind of stuff to him. And he's mentally tore down. And I keep telling him to leave. He don't listen. So I'm praying that he wake up one day and be a better person. But right now, I'm on the thing, David. Go in there. That's my oldest son. He's a mama's boy. He's a mama's boy. I don't tell nobody else. But this, the other one, he don't listen. He had every sign under the sun that this girl is a mental and a physical abuser. She didn't bleach his clothes. It's one time she cut his shoes up and I went over there and he had on these little shoes. And I'm like, you wear a size 11. What size shoe is that? His friend had to lend him a pair of shoes that was a nine and a half because she cut up all his shoes. So when I say it's women that abuse men, they do. My son going through it. And every time he get ready to leave, you know you all I have. I don't have parents like you. And make him feel sorry for her. So all I can do is pray for him. And I pray it end up being a good outcome because he claimed he's going to leave this year. He's going to leave and get his own and do his own thing. So I know how it goes. Okay. I'm dealing with it with my own son. So when I hear parents that lose their child or their family member to a domestic violence, I understand. But you can't make nobody do nothing. People don't leave until they're ready to leave. Sometimes it's too late. Sometimes you have a story like Cassie. Y'all have to love yourself enough to say, nope, not doing it. Uh, all these beautiful people in the world, all these beautiful men and women, and you think I'm going to mess with your ass? What? It's too many options out here. And if it comes down to it, be alone. Make God the lover of your soul. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be with nobody. But I want to talk about one more thing before I go. Ernesto. Ernest. Y'all know who that is? Miss Shirley Strawberry Husband. I did a lot of videos about him back in September, about November. <sighs> I thought the man had already got sentenced and he was gone, you know. So now he didn't pop back up. I guess he he they gave him bond or something, seventy some thousand dollar bond. He shouldn't get a bond. When it comes to messing with children, I ain't say you won't be forgiven. Cause you still God, that's how God work. But when it comes to messing with children, can you really be rehabilitated if you like a child? Just think, can you really be really rehabilitated if you're looking at a little kid in a lustful way? I don't know. I'm not saying God won't forgive you, but I don't know if you can be healed from that. To me, that's a mental illness. That you're looking at a baby and you looking at them as a grown person. Well, Inesto, Miss Shirley Strawberry, she's the one that write the Steve Harvey, on um, the Steve Harvey Morning Show to write the um, Strawberry Letters. All y'all was writing in to her, getting advice, and the whole time she was married to Freaky Jason. Yeah, she married this man and know who he was. She gave him all her savings. She was staying house to house, mansion to mansion. They lost like four or five mansions. How you get evicted out of a mansion? Who evict people out of man? Who is these people that even renting mansions and you get evicted? They got evicted out of like six, four or five mansions, six mansions, something like that. They stay long enough until the, the mortgages do. And I can't imagine how much a mansion mortgage is. And they get evicted. They get another one. Because he was doing um, false documentations, fraudulent stuff. Could y'all get my likes up, please? He was doing a lot of fraudulent stuff. And he had the freaky barbershop, the 24-hour barbershop I was telling y'all about the other day. And they think Steve Harvey and maybe Diddy. Got something to do with this because he was doing the same thing they said Diddy's doing. And come to find out, Steve Harvey and Diddy is buddies. He sold Lori allegedly to Diddy. And then Diddy, then um, uh, Ernesto and Steve, they good buddies. He the one introduced allegedly 
her to Steve, and she said he didn't. I don't know. But he gave Miss Shirley Strawberry away at the wedding. So he know it, Nesto. He knew what this brother was doing. Steve probably was at the barber shop getting a little trim at 3 in the morning. You know what I'm saying? So he probably was at the barber shop. And everybody at that barber shop saying, Ernest, a.k.a. Nesto, was making them sleep with him. We had to sleep with him to work there. Now, see, this word come in at with me. They said all these women were victims, right? <sighs> Y'all need to pray for me the way I think. I, I think I need prayer because if I go to a barbershop to be a hairstylist and the owner say I have to sleep with him to be a hairstylist and I sleep with him to be a hairstylist, how am I a victim? Can somebody explain this to me? If he telling me, the only way you can get this job is if you sleep with me, and I sleep with him, and I keep sleeping with him to keep my job, how in the heck I'm a victim? And I'm grown. When do it come a time in life when you are accountable for your own actions? Huh? See, I, I don't like this victim mentality. Y'all, women doing stuff, and he made me, he didn't tell you, uh, first of all, you couldn't even get the job unless you slept with him. That was one of the qualifications. He tell women at the door, well, you got to sleep with me. So how you working there, sis, if you ain't sleep with him? Because they already said that's one of his qualifications. So you slept with him. You wanted that job that bad. There were no other salons in the city. You wanted that job. How are you a victim? Well, you made an adult cho choice to open your legs, to get a job, and you kept sleeping with this man. Now they going to the court saying he pretty much made them do it. I, I don't, am I wrong? Am I thinking something stupid? Because y'all help me out with this because I, I don't understand how you can decide to do something on your own free accord and then you tell people you're a victim. I don't get that. And then I know what y'all going to say. Manipulation. No, 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 no. Nope. No, maybe after you end for a minute, but from the door, I'm sorry. So that's one of his charges, okay? Then he was taken from people doing fraudulent um, credit scams, some with the credit, and then real estate. He had his woman in a mansion next to his wife, which was Miss Shirley. So I'm thinking, why did he marry Miss Shirley? Miss Shirley, like, 11 years older than him, right? She pretty, though. Miss Shirley got it going on. So I'm thinking, why did he pick Miss Shirley? He had all these young girls chasing him. Because Miss Shirley, the one, had the reputation. She was Steve Harvey, strawberry letter woman. She got the insight to Steve. She got the reputation. She got stability. That's why. All them other women ain't on nothing. So he used Miss Shirley. And then he was knocking her boots from here to Kingdom Kong. She probably ain't had no. It probably was dust on it. <sighs> dust on it. He didn't knock the dust off of it. Because he, he freaky. He freaky. That's why I said I wonder what um, Steve Harvey, Ernesto, uh, 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 Sean Puffy, come. What y'all taking? Cause these brothers in their fifties and sixties, y'all. These ain't young bucks, and they all over the news for having f offs. What are they taking? I need to know so I can patent it. Cause there's some brothers right around in my neighborhood that need this. Okay, and they about to lose their wives, and I can get rich. I didn't know what the heck they taking. Because I ain't never heard so many people having this much sex in my life. It's like, dang, is that all y'all think about all day long is sex? So, he had four wives. He never divorced them. Miss, Miss Strawberry, I think, was fifth. Well, let me cut through all the chase. Y'all got to go back and watch the story. Anywho, he got a bond the other day. Okay? His woman up there constantly, Sonia, 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 Taking up for him because they saying they went in his computer and they found some uh allegedly kid porn and animal shit. And they found videos and she said, Oh, they couldn't have did that. They lied. She going up to the jail visiting this man, knowing that he had five wives, knowing he's been charged. He ain't like Diddy, he's been charged with child pee. And sleeping with animals. She know this. And still take her happy butt up to that jail every time they open that door. 
This is what I be saying about weak women. You know what his charges are. They had enough to charge this man. And you sitting there talking about what they couldn't have done when they said they have evidence. And Miss Shirley, mad because I thought she was going to divorce this man. She mad because Sony going up there. So she on Instagram talking about free Ernesto. Now you want this man to be free that lied to you about how many wives he had. He had you living in a car. I forgot that part. Miss Shirley Strawberry went bankrupt, y'all. I was living in her truck. She was homeless. She didn't have no friends or nothing. Not only that, her daughter said Ernesto had been trying to touch her and her grandkids. She put them out the house for this man. And started paying for her daughter rent somewhere else. Oh, you ain't gonna mess up my penis. To this day, her daughter don't deal with her. They go shopping here and there. She still help her daughter out. But she don't believe her daughter or her grandkids that this man was trying to touch them. And she on Instagram saying, free my husband. And y'all gonna tell me, it ain't no weak women around here. I guess they victims too. I guess they victims too. So that's why I wanted to talk about today, weak folks. You cannot be weak and make stupid decisions with your life and then tell everybody you a victim after you just stayed, after stuff like that happened. I found out he cheating on me, he with another woman. I'm gonna run to the police and to the internet, tell everybody I was a victim. No, because if he wouldn't have done all that, you'd still be there, right, sis? But what did it take for you to leave? Oh, the, the, the penis left the building. It left. It ain't like it used to be. He got somebody else. Now I'm a victim. And I'm not saying there's no victims. Don't get me wrong, because I know Selector Harris. Go, you, I'm a victim. It's a lot of people that was victimized. Their daddy did it, their uncle, their cousins, their neighbors. It's a lot of people that's really victims. And that's the sad part about it, y'all. That is the very sad part about it, that it's a lot of people that's victims. And the bad women making it hard for the real victims. You hear what I'm saying? They making it so hard for the people that really are victimized to be heard. Because look what little Rodney just did. So now the next person that comes to that federal judge, he going to be sitting there like, what now? He ain't going to be quick to believe the story because little Rod and his attorney did some old bold stuff. Y'all see what I'm saying? It's a lot of people that's out for a money bag. They, they chasing a coin. If y'all don't believe me, cut on Facebook and Instagram. You see girls all day long making videos. The dude driving, he trying to take me to Applebee's. Uh-uh, who he think I am? I chase the coin. Cut on OnlyFans. They got their legs open. I cut on Facebook today. The first thing I, I seen when I cut on Facebook was a girl butt. She just shaking her butt. Face. I'm like, what make women think we want to see that? So you're selling yourself. And then when somebody take you up on what you're offering and they treat you like what you are because you just said you were, you were what? A guard tool. You just showed the world this is what I got. And they started treating you like that. Now you're coming 10 years later. You know I was victimized off a person I met on Facebook. You see what I'm saying? When it's people really in their shell, sitting in their house in the dark, depressed, and don't know who to tell what's going on with them. Because people like me get on here and I say, well, are you a real victim? Because now I don't know who is who no more. I don't even recognize the real victims because there's so many fake ones. I don't mean to be mean, but you can't keep pissing in my ear and telling me it's rain. Like, for example, y'all about to be mad at me about this one. How in the heck you going to wait 20 years? 20. Here that Cassie got $30 million. You didn't heard about Kim Porter dying. You didn't heard about uh, uh, um, Tupac Go, Biggie. You didn't heard about all this stuff that Diddy supposed to have done. You never said nothing. We didn't even know who you was. Soon as you hear Cassie got $30 million. All of a sudden, the police phone ringing off the hook. Hello? Yeah, Sean Puffy Combs, when I was at the club when I was 17, how old are you now? I'm 37. 
So this happened when you were 17? Yes, but I was at the club and him and his friends put me on a plane. They took me to New York and they molested me. Where was your mama at when you were 17? I don't remember, but I remember everything they did to me. That's a girl in Detroit. Now, you didn't call when Kim Porter died. You didn't call when Biggie Small died. You didn't call when Tupac died. You didn't call when Diddy was acting a fool all through Hollywood. When you heard $30 million. Oh, wait a minute, Jesus. I remember what Diddy did to me. Now, she a victim. It was that 20 years ago. How can you remember? I remember who I messed with 20 years ago, true enough. But how can... You go on with your life for 20 years. You didn't have babies by Pookie, Ray Ray, John John Jr., little Kevin. You got a bunch of kids in the house. You didn't been beat on. You didn't beat folks. You've been lied on. You've been cheated on. You've been through everything you could think of. Probably on the system, off the system. Went to school. My mama was on drugs. All kind of stuff you'd have been through. But that billion dollar penis is the only thing that messed up your mind that billion dollar penis none of the other stuff that you've been through in your life have messed with you shouldn't you be taking ray ray and junior to court they ain't even paying child support they got kids over there they ain't even taking care of their kids but you're going after diddy for what he did to you when you were 17. and i know people say this well people don't like to just come out no why did it take for someone to get $30 million for somebody to talk? That's my question. See, I couldn't be a prosecutor, y'all. I'm like, so why you didn't come out when you heard about Cam Porter? Why you, when we heard, when we heard about, uh, what's his name? Al B. Shore. Jamie Foxx. You know, just last year, they almost died. You didn't say nothing. Wouldn't that be the time to say, well, he did something to me, too. I believe him. No, we didn't hear from you. We didn't hear from you until we heard $30 million in 24 hours. Wait. I gotta get my money too. They giving up money. I got pictures sitting on Diddy lap at the club. That's all she got is some pictures. I got pictures with New Edition. Should I say that they took advantage of me when I was 15, 16? Because you know, Bobby Brown's sister just did Tasha K and said that her Bobby Brown been molesting her daughter. I don't know if I wanna believe that. It ain't because I'm being biased. I didn't talk to this lady before. She been on my YouTube channel. She been on my Facebook page. She been on several interviews. Never one time mentioned Bobby did nothing to her kids. When Bobby finally cut her, his family off of his new wife because they don't like her, all of a sudden Bobby touched her daughter. I think three of them. And I'm trying to think back, okay, Bobby been famous since he was 12, 10. He always was on the road. Then he met Whitney at a young age, in his 20s. When was he with his niece alone and nobody knew about it? I'm just saying. Did they just go to Uncle Bobby's house? Was they at the Whitney house and they never said nothing? I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm not saying they're lying. I'm like, you got to make stuff make sense to me. Don't wait till you get mad and you broke and you don't have nothing. R. Kelly girls, a lot of them. Y'all don't have nothing. Now y'all want to tell. You should have been told. And I know I can't tell victims when to tell. Don't get mad at me, y'all. But you got to make stuff make sense to the courts. Otherwise, you're not going to get nothing. And then I don't understand when you do go to the courts, you don't go for justice. You go for money. I don't get that. If I distract... If I'm messed up from somebody doing something to me, I don't want their money. I don't want your dirty money, dirty ditty. I want you to go to prison. Cassie, 18 men several times. Your insides got to be toe up. You shouldn't have no walls, nothing. And you were strung out on drugs. And you settled for $30 million. I would have wanted blood. I wouldn't even want his money. I didn't live that life already. I didn't enjoy your money, Diddy. I didn't been on red carpets. I didn't been all over the world with you. Now it's time for you to pay the piper, brother. That's how I will feel. 
I don't need your money. I'm happy with my husband. We good. It's time for you to pay for what you did to me. And I want you to go to jail. That's what I would have did. But all these women coming out, these are lawsuits. Y'all wonder why Diddy not in jail? Because they want, it's money. They not trying to say, hey, I want him to go to jail for what he did. No, I want to sue him. And a lot of them ain't going to jail because the prosecutor reads the case and say, nope, there's not enough evidence. You know, it's up to the prosecutor, right? If they look at something and they think it's BS, it ain't going nowhere. No matter how mad you get. But that's what I want to talk about tonight, y'all. A lot of the stuff can be prevented if women just from the first sign say no. What did Cal Williams say? You got to say no to Diddy. You got to say no. He said he said no five times to $50 million. Five times. No, Diddy. No, Diddy. No, Diddy. No, Diddy. No. I'm not for sale, Diddy. Do Cal Williams hate Diddy? No, he just stay away from him. Yeah, y'all see how easy that is? Did, did they do anything to Cat? Mm -mm. He told Diddy no and still lived. So everybody, he killing people. He doing, yeah, after you in, in too deep, you know too much. You got involved. Now you in too deep. Yeah, they got to delete some people. You know all my business. This is why you got to leave before you get in too deep. You can't participate in one and two F offs and then say, I don't want to do it no more. Now that's when the choking gonna come in, the black eyes, and I done gave you 50,000, what is it? 250,000 a month. 250,000 a month. That's crazy. That's a lot of money. And nobody giving you that kind of money to be their girlfriend. Cause you cute. He ain't had to pay J-Lo. Hey, I thought about that. He ain't paid J-Lo to be his woman. He was just giving J-Lo money. J-Lo left. That's another thing I want you to think about. J-Lo left right after the pow-pow. She was out. Did anybody car get blown up? Did she uh, get beat down? Did anybody in her family come on missing? No, she left. The first sign of stupid, she was out. If J-Lo wouldn't have left, she would be Cassie right now. Sometimes the choices we make determine our destiny for the rest of our lives. You know what I'm saying? And we got to think better as women. I'm my sister keeper. I'm trying to help my, my sisters out. I'm like, man, if you can't leave, call somebody to help you get an exit plan. Don't, don't go telling a man that's crazy, I'm going to divorce you. And give him an opportunity to come home to delete you. A lady just got killed in my city last year from that. She found out he was gay. She seen the pictures in the phone. And instead of her handling the appropriate way, she went to social media and started uploading them in his text messages. He came right home, went in the drawer, grabbed the gun, and pretty much saying, oh, you just think you for to embarrass me like that? She tried to run upstairs. She ran in the bathroom, tried to jump out the window. He let loose on her. I think he shot her about nine, ten times while she was jumping out the window. That ain't how you leave somebody that's crazy. That, and, and do not ever put a man on blast about his sexuality. That, that's a no-no. Because -no. a lot of them are embarrassed by it. They would kill you to keep that secret. So he deleted her. And he said, I did it because she exposed me. Have a plan. A man without a fool. A man without a plan is a fool. A man without a plan is a fool. If you're going to leave somebody, have a plan. I don't care if you got to charm them. I love you, baby. Have a good day at work. Okay, I'm. what you want to eat tonight? Charm him. Why he at work? Pack your stuff, and he will never see you no more. Some of y'all got these crazy men. They'll kill your mama. That's why I say, man, y'all better, better know who y'all laying down with. You better know who you attaining. You better know who you're allowing to have F-offs with, get in your head. These are some crazy people. We have some crazy times, man. When somebody show you one sign, leave. Don't get in that deep. Because a lot of people don't make it out. 
And your mental state and your peace mean everything. You don't compromise that for nobody. You hear me? This your girl Nina from Breakable Strong Woman. Could y'all please get my likes up before I get off here? I hope I helped somebody a little bit. And I hope I did not hurt nobody's feelings. And I'm not victim shaming. I know it's going to be people saying that. No, I'm not. I want women to be so strong. I don't understand how women can go around here saying, I'm a strong woman and a Negro ain't going to do this and do that and it is and then that's you know i see you on tv i was a victim when i thought you were strong and even the ones that's on here that's been victimized can we please put that title aside if you can't do nothing to the person that did it to you let it go i know it's hard to say don't let him hold on to you for the rest of your life where you can't be happy don't let this person who victimized you keep winning. They keep winning. If you just sitting in your shell and you telling everybody what your daddy did and what your uncles did, even the ones that wasn't even victimized in that way, that your father was in your life or your mama was in your life, let that mess go. That's their loss. Sorry you wasn't, you missed out on a great person. If you're going through heartbreak, send that brother or that sister a sympathy card. Mm -hmm. It works. Send them a sympathy card and put a, a cute picture in there. They open up your sympathy card. Sorry, you lost the best thing that ever happened to you. I feel so bad for you, so I'm sending you this card. I'm going to pray for you, okay? Because you will never get another me. Have a good day, brother. Don't be crying over these sap suckers. Don't be crying over... If somebody want to leave, let them go. I don't want to keep nobody that don't want to stay. Some people need to leave. Some people hold you holding on to blocking your blessings. Your husband waiting across the street for you and you holding on to a, a, a little Jody. Your husband right over there. You can't get to your husband because he blocking your blessings. Let Jody go. So what he hurt you? He cheated on you. Let's cry a little bit. Get put on your big girl, big girl panties, take you a hot bath, get you some wine, cut on your music, clean your house. Never would have made it without you. I would have lost it all. <laughs> cut on some arm and sap. If you want to call some arm and sap, call on some R and B. Some Luther Vandra, a little Aaliyah. Music can get you through a lot of things. Even, even though y'all don't like R. Kelly, R. Kelly will help you through a lot of things. You know one song I love about R. Kelly is, um, If I Could Turn Back the Hands of Time. And it's another one. It's a church song. R. Kelly got some good songs, but this to the women. I'm going to tell y'all what helped me. And I'm going to let y'all go. This what helped me when I was in that car and I had to leave my husband. He showed me a sign of crazy. When he tried to mentally tear me down, I've been there. When I first heard that, it was so familiar, I couldn't pack fast enough. Let me tell you what got me through those days. Whitney Houston, and it was both of those songs, R. Kelly wrote them. Um, and, uh, and also Marvin Sapp. You saw the best in me when everybody else only could see the worst in me. Whitney Houston, um, what is the name of the song? I didn't, I didn't know my own strength, and I looked to you. Look it up. I didn't know my own strength, and I looked to you. R. Kelly wrote both those songs. R. Kelly is a musical genius, y'all. I don't care what y'all think about him. Can't take his talent away from him. Play them two songs. You saw The Best in Me by Marvin Sapp and never would have made it. That's four songs would get you over anything, I promise you. And a lot of prayer. Get in your quiet closet and trust God. I've been through a lot. But I am never going to claim I'm a victim to nothing. I'm victorious. It's nothing in this world I can't get through with God. I don't like people to claim being a victim. Get out of that mindset. He did that. She did that. Let it go. When my son called me, I don't pamper him. I listen to the phone. They be arguing. He be like, see, mom, this is what I say. Okay, when, when you going to be ready to leave there? Huh? Let me call you back. Okay, I thought you would. You don't want to hear what I got to say. When you get ready to leave, let me know. Because I ain't got time for that. 
And I get off and I say, peace be still. And I send my hand over there and I pray, Lord, protect my child. That's all I can do. I can't lose no sleep because he making bad choices. He been with this girl 10 years, mentally tearing him down. And he still ain't learned yet. Talk, you know why? Because he don't want to leave his babies. Sometimes I think I did too well. He don't want to leave them kids. So he'd rather go through all the things he going through to be in the house with them kids. What your mom used to say, you lay down with dogs, you might catch fleas. You got to be careful who you reproduce with. You got to be careful who you open your womb to, your soul, your life. You got to be careful because you stuck with them people. Then you reproduce in many me's that's going to be just like them. Everything that's cute don't mean it's good for you, okay? But I'm sorry. I want to apologize if I feel like I'm victim shaming. I don't. I just like people to be strong around me. I don't know. I can show you how to be strong. I can't show you how to be weak. I can show you how to get over out of a car. Go through losing your parents. How to get over losing your sister. How to get over being cheated on, lied on. How to get over a child with cancer. How to get over a child that's been shot. You, I can show you how to do a lot of that because that's me. I'm a walking testimony. But I can't show you how to get over a black eye because I, I ain't never had one from a man or a woman. Can't show you that. I can show you how to leave and be good, but I can't show you how to heal from a black eye because I'll be talking right now from a penitentiary. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to get over from a black eye. Don't do like me. Mm-hmm. So, it's so sad what happened to Polo Tink Tink. What happened to him? He ain't got. He just got a torso. And I could, the same arm, every time he hit me with one of them arms and keep me with the feet, they came off. Polar Tink Tink. I'm not taking it from the door. I'm not starting. You, I'm not going to start. You're not going to get comfortable punching me. I'm not your punching bag, brother. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing no F-offs. We ain't finna have no threesomes. We don't, this ain't no singing group. We don't need extra members in our bedroom. If I can't satisfy you, just me and you, it's time for you to go. Uh-uh. A woman can't touch me. I ain't being dis... I ain't trying to discriminate or be racist against women. A woman can't touch me. And I don't want no extra man in the room because he may do better than you. And my crazy, but because I'm a sinner, I've been and left your ass and went over there with him. Because you probably ain't doing nothing since you need an extra man in the room. I'm just being real with you. You know what I'm saying? This your girl, Nina. <laughs> From a breakable, strong woman. I hope y'all learned something today. It don't be too harsh on me because I don't mean no harm. I'm just being real. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.